All right, welcome back. This is game number three of our very first match of the entire Saints gaming season here in the OPSC preseason versus Carlton University. Carlton took game number one rather convincingly. However, it just completely flipped there, it seems, for St. Clair College in game number two. And now getting started with game number three, hitting the bands right away. Looks like the Saints don't like bugs or gargoyles. Apparently not, as Kazix and Galio both getting taken out extremely quickly. There we go. And then, okay, we're not going to have the Lilia this time here. It looks like Carlton shutting that down before it gets started once again. And Caitlyn taking out once again. Trying true ban it'd be, here. It would be interesting to see a Senna ban here. Or... That too is uh, for Frez. Is a very oppressive laner for Frez to deal with. But Carl's have to make a decision here whether to either give over the Ash or ban it, or even the Senna too. Oh, the Yone. They're just taking away the pieces that seem to have worked last time. This is essentially what happens. What is going to happen when both teams take away? All the champions that essentially won pick, the game, they, they left the Ash. Here. Yep, they instantly take care of it. Ash on the board. That arrow, that's those slows, they're just too good. And we're going to have another Senna for, yeah. for game number three. At this point, the 80 carry slot, for the most part, when when one of those are uh, when either Caitlyn or Ash are left open, is going to be one of those plus Senna. Seems to be the way this meta rolls right now. I don't know if you noticed, Daniel, but uh, we have uh, Biansfa playing I was support going this game. To, I was going to mention that. There was the substitution here. Biansfa taking over the support role. Barnacle Boy did fantastic in your first two games. Hopefully, we'll see you again sometime soon. But we'll have to also see how Biansfa manages to take this support role and how different does he play compared to Barnacle Boy. Oh... So I mean, they both play Nautilus. Okay. I mean, this actually makes a pretty smooth transition. This is kind of the stuff that I would personally want to see when you have a substitute. Have them play exactly what the other guy would have played anyway. Because it just makes for smooth transitions. Having two see... supports with two polar opposite styles would be very, very rough on Lazi. We're going to see Nautilus and Shen three games in a row coming from the sides of Saints Gaming. I'm actually extremely surprised with how uh, how confident they are with these two. I mean, Frez got absolutely bopped during game number one, but game number two, much better performance. And then, I mean, bot lane for the most part has been pretty smooth overall. Like Barnacle and Lassie have been doing pretty fine. So safe pick overall inside the Saints. And we have some oh. different picks here on the side of uh, Carlton. The Karma the and Orn. the Orn. The Orn getting through uh, through a ban phase for, for once in the series. So we'll possibly get to see uh, the ornaments if, uh, if the game scales or, or goes uh, for that long. It's becoming an absolute unkillable object in the late game, of course. He's an, an immovable object. Exactly. Now, what do St. Clair want to ban here? We still, I'm trying to see. The Shivana's still there if they want to try and let that through. Because like you're saying, it relied a lot on the other lanes doing well to have allowed Shivana to go as crazy as it did. Just getting a message from the, from William here, who is, uh, if you guys oh, yeah, I remember, remember him. is... Uh, his name is Lord. I won't say his full name because uh, yeah, it's, it's Lord. It's Lord, right? Yes. Yeah. Lord, then uh, you know the rest. Yeah, Lord Tia. Oh, yeah. this is a first coming from Carlton. The Kindred Band coming, oh. uh, targeting Trick in the jungle. Mm hmm. And I do recall when I was doing, I was actually doing a little bit of research for a cast once. Don't tell anybody. But I was actually looking up Trick's past games, at least on, on his main account. There wasn't that much activity as of lately, to be honest. But there was a decent amount of Kindred. So I'm actually very surprised to see the focus on that champ specifically. And this one weirds me out a little bit. The cane? Why Kane? We hmm. haven't seen it at all so far. 
Kane wouldn't really mesh with this uh, with this team comp unless you're going like Assassin Kane or something. But oh, looks like uh, they're mixing up in the mid lane with Zillion. Somebody's a Bjerg fan. Or Jensen. <laughs> or Jensen, yeah, that's true as well. I mean, time and time again, we see Zillion. He's not the most hype champion in the world, but he damn well is effective. He, he, he just gives anybody on your team a second life. He is just the embodiment of support. And then here we go. We got two different picks here. The Olaf is locked in. And the I'm... Zoe, which is which has been banned for for both game one and two. But getting through uh through ban phase just like the uh the Orn has this game. And the Ash. Now the jungle still hasn't been necessarily picked out here for the side of Carlton as well. Do we see Shivana make a return? If uh, if Shivana can get snowballing, she didn't game one. And never mind. There Not it is. Good no graves. graves before I finish my sentence. And that's all right. Just overall solid pick. So three games, three different team compositions on both sides. I like this already. It's uh, it's what you call a uh, a great variety of of games and champions. I'm extremely grateful because I remember the days of like, where how we are with Ash and Caitlyn right now. And oh, if you don't pick Ash, Caitlyn, or ban, you pick like Senna and something else. I remember the days when that was basically every role. I remember the days <laughs> of would playing Ash mid lane in season one. <laughs> Those are the days. I, yes, they were. I am very old. No, I'm not, I'm not really old. I just played the game for 10 years. Uh, for sure. My first, uh, or I started playing when Oriana first came out. So I'm pretty old too, but at the same time, I've not exactly been active. So. <laughs> but the biggest disappointment in both of these drafts, there was no Shaco. Very true. <laughs> I'm what sorry, do you want Tyler. me to do? Do my... What do you want me to do? Do my shake a laugh on stream? <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure it's very... I'm, last time I did it was like very bad, but I don't remember since I haven't done it in a while. I'm tempting you, ain't I? <laughs> no, you're not at the slightest. Dang it, I tried. <laughs> you have to give me bonus points for trying, right? Yes, very much so. And of course, before this game actually gets started, I just wanted to let everybody know. Well, first off, um, as you may have already noticed... We are streaming on more than just Twitch this year. We're on Twitter. We're on YouTube as well. And like any platform, be sure to let your friends and family know about us. And of course, if you do want to try out for any of the St. Clair teams, the roster locks aren't, for most games anyway, aren't until October. So be sure to go to our website and apply. And then we'll contact you via Discord. Still got time. And then lastly, this may be the only match this week, but we're about to get into the main season within a week or two, and it's going to start getting crazy. This, is, of course, is the lineup for the upcoming matches. We are going to have pretty much one match streamed every day of the week, except maybe Sundays unless there's a tournament. But like the next that match is a lot of content, if I do say so. Absolutely. The next match that you'll be seeing here on the stream is going to be on Wednesday, the 16th, just about a week from now, eight o'clock. It's going to be another preseason match this time, though, in the UCEA Overwatch League. So be hyped for that. And we'll get to see League of Legends again pretty soon as well. The 19th, you guys have your HUE uh, League of Legends Invitational Tournament. Look forward to watching that. That one starts early, though. I'm going to be a, a sad boy for that one. I'm <laughs> happy to stream some content. But God, that's early. <laughs> but uh, going back to the game here, I'm, I'm curious to see how, uh, how, how the two junglers will interact in the jungle. Because last time mm -hmm. I checked, Olaf does somewhat counter graves with his undertow, his, uh, his axes. Right, because it has that little slow attach to it, right? So he can just catch yeah. right up to you. And, I mean... I feel like early game Olaf does a bunch of damage. A lot of people might not know this, but if if Graves is slowed even the slightest, his uh his dash, as I mentioned before, his E is like significantly slower. It's so, like the animation is slower. Oh, it even cuts that down. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 really weird, but it works. Okay, because I'm used to like, oh, you get slowed, you have a dash, it still goes the full distance, but then you're like slowed after the fact. You're saying the uh the dash itself is also yeah. slowed? Yeah. 
Okay. It's so kind of yeah. it's kind of like the same thing as um as Callista, how she can dash with every, every auto attack. Gotcha. If she if she's slowed, she is not moving. Right. Stun or slow, she is not moving. All right, so the delay is taken care of. We're loading into our final match here for the night. I'm extremely happy that uh, first day back, and we're going the full distance here with both these teams. Put on a great show today. And Tommy, once again, big thank you to you for hopping in and uh, co-commentating here with me. Oh, oh, not a problem. Just uh, something to uh, to point out. Shenong on his graves opted for the Ignite instead of the Flash this game. Aggressive. So he's going to be flowing for a very... Aggressive playstyle early on in the game. Aggressive excites me. Yes. All right, without further ado, as we can see, it's game time. Now we're never here for the St. Clair squad. Are you stuck in the game as I am at zero seconds? I am still seeing a gray screen, so hang on. We're loading in. Don't you worry. Here it comes. Weird. That is very weird, if I do say so myself. There we go. Champions loaded in. It's game three time. Preseason action just about to wrap up. Who's going to take the W here today? Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Looks like Saints is looking for an early invade. I mean, it worked for him and last they, time. They, Might as well and try they it. it. Oh, Nate, that was a huge hook there from Anspu. He, Showing up he, huge right off the start, and that goes right over to Yul Zoe. Now he's feeling the effect of not taking Flash right at the beginning of the game. Insta punish. Exactly. And the kill also going over to Yul as well. And that's going to grant him an, an early Doran's Ring as well, on top of the, uh, the Corrupting Potion. As if you want Zoe to have any more burst damage. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fantastic start here for St. Clair. Looks like both bot laners, or both bot laners not leashing for, for the junglers. Turk opting for a leashless start as well to, to hide his location on the map. Crafty. Oh. Greg's is about to be spot on the ward that uh that Fresh just spotted. Yeah, possibly and looking it, to get some action started early. But, and it gets yeah. buffed and another stutter. Okay. Am I still at uh, two minutes and five seconds? I'm on 210 right now. So I am two seconds behind you. I will try to slow it down for a second. 215. In a brief 16, moment, we see some 17. decent damage oh. coming out here for uh, the top side. But now we got a jungle battle as well for that big wolf that's going to be going oh. over to Trick. Oh my. Some damage going to be going over, but he's going to use that uh, plan on the ground to explode him over. And then here, I will pause for about two seconds here. As soon as this mid lane engagement happens, as uh, that's a lot of damage coming oh. out here on the jungler. Uh, oh Carlton. my! Holy smokes! He was just gonna go for it. He does take it down. Oh, Gus blows his flash as he goes down as well. An absolute rough exploding. start. You will have to go down in the mid lane as well. And here comes Trick with the chase down onto the Zillion bot lane. Shut the turret. Trick gets the kill as and well. And another one. This camera's all over the place. Huge action coming out here. Start things off. Okay, I paused for just a second just to let you catch up here. Okay, so... It should be good 11, now. 12, 13, 14, Pretty 15. much right there as we okay. do get... Perez battling up in the top lane once again. Gus looking to try and get some revenge after going down pretty early in this laning phase. He's going Looks to win like, the uh, engagement out. Shit, I'm looking for another invade onto Trick. I was gonna get the he red buff, and now Trick is in a world of hurt. There it goes. He's gone. He's he's. That's the danger of uh of playing Olaf. The juggler finds you at 100 HP. You're just gone. Absolutely. 
Ozzy gonna try and run for the hills as Shinnok's coming down from the jungle. It's gonna be Mansfield probably going down, gonna try and flash for it. Does end up going down anyway. Never sorry. Going to pick up the kill onto that one. Lassie's still trying to stay in lane as best as possible. However, the Karma going to make a little bit of uh, extra harassment under the turn. Another stutter again, by the way. But I don't think it will matter that much. And Pushing okay, guys. So aggressive. And oh my. Fresh just gets bopped by the brittle passive and auto attack. On Lazi down bot also forced to flash. And now Never Story getting aggressive is going to win that duel out. Taking care of Ozzy, quick fashion. Absolute slugfest in game three, though. Everyone's just going at each other's necks right now. Absolutely, the one in the best situation right now would probably be you. Oh my goodness! Delian hanging on by kill? a thread, but now. Oh, the smoke screen. Oh, the revenge of Shinong, though. Went down early. Now twos across the board. What a mess. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, it was weird, though. Like, game two had this exact same kind of, like, chaos. However, it went really hard in the favor of Saints. This time, still just as scrappy. However, back and forth for the most part. And actually, if there's anyone favored, it is going to be the side of uh, Carlton just ever so slightly. And then props for to uh, Shenong for getting back into this, considering he was the first one who went down. Despite all that's happened in this game already, both junglers are relatively even in terms of gold. Mm hmm. Yeah, like uh, Shenong's not CSing in the slightest or like doing very many camps, but I mean you're making up for it in assists and, and eliminations, so why not? I mean it's the herbivore versus the carnivore. Exactly. One place for kills, one place for farm. It still gets you to the same spot in the end, so whichever you prefer, I suppose. So the Shinnok finally going to get to his bot side jungle. The Hawkshot is spotting out the uh, the graves in the lower half of the jungle. Oh, you're looking to get aggressive here in the mid lane. Patop going to try and put on his dancing shoes and get out of here, but he's going to take half of his health for that. Just ever so slightly mispositioned and loses so much health. Zoe's just a great champion, dude. V very good game design. Yeah, it doesn't help that, that Zoe has already had two kills on an assist under her belt as well. And then Yule's just been doing a fantastic job of just constantly punishing Patalp over and over any chance that he could. I think uh, I think that Ward from Saints spotted out the Shenang on that mm -hmm. dragon. We have an engage down on the bot side. Man's with the hook, but Lassie. Taking a bunch of damage is going to make them think twice. Yule's going to be the one who actually secures this dragon, though, in perfect timing. However, we have the sleep, and there it goes. That's going to be the shutdown gold going over oh to both of these champions, both of these players. Trick Yule lives, too, some trick gets some. Nights. And yeah, he ends up living out of that, too. So a two for nothing plus a Drake for St. Clair. Fries coming to the rescue with his Stain United from the top lane. He keeps Trick alive. But still, gets interrupted by the Orn. Although it looks a little bit rough here for Frez. Oh. He's going to be forced to blow that flash on that 1v1. One taunt too many, it looks like. And Gus is going to be able to punish him for that greatly. We're not even 10 Man. minutes in yet, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But just looking at both junglers, despite how aggressive shenong has been against Trick in terms of invading... Trick is somehow, like, slightly ahead. Ever so slightly, if I do say so. I'm just happy with how uh, how even this game feels, but then I look at the gold and it's like, wait a minute. I guess it's almost a 1,000, but it's... Uh, long it's spot on a pink ward. Yeah, are they going to think about getting crafty? Use that plant? Blast over, maybe? Hmm, I don't think so. Baited? Oh, Fres is, Fres is baiting. Oh, Get the plant. There it goes. Oh, Trick's gonna secure Mantra that. Oh, will out of nowhere on the room. <laughs> this might be even a herald here. Might as well go for it. You do have the extra beef there with uh, Mansfo there. And actually, no, he's just gonna opt solo. What it looks like. Yeah, I did not see uh, Mansfo coming at even all. I didn't even notice. 
It's like, okay, they're going to try and 2v1 this. This is possible. Oh, never mind. This is extremely possible. There comes the anchor. From out of nowhere. Down. Shuts it down nice and quick. It looks like Trick will easily be able to secure this uh, this Herald. A big damage ignite onto Shinong, and that extra little damager from Trick's going to get the kill. However, the, the top is right there to set off the Zillion ult. And we're going to have ourselves a scrap. It's going to be Shinong going down for the second time in this team fight. Then the Ornn going to try and jump onto though. him. He's getting ran down by Olaf. Flash. Goes down, Flames and there's two. another one that's going to be Yul taking care oh. of that one. That's a tilter you hate to see. That, I think, was a three for nothing on the side of Saints. Some of these team fights are just not going well for the side of Carlton. And, I mean, it's kind of terrifying, but... Uh, Yul Zoe is absolutely on fire right now. Oh, 100%. Didn't that be the reason why they banned it for two straight games, but the one game they let it through, he just popping off. And of course, Zoe had the extra flash stored, so as soon as Gus showed up, just flash away. You still have an additional flash if you really needed it. Going to the bottom side of the map, they're just chilling in the bot lane, just farming. Even even though Saints is down two kills in the bot lane, Lazi's oh. ahead, 20 CF. He oh thought my. he had the chance. And oh it gets my. absolutely shut down. Trick showing up out of nowhere once again. Adding on that extra damage necessary. And as if Yule needed another kill, finds himself another. Trick just, just now essentially just reading Shannon like a book now. I think the Grix is just out of the game. Oh, and so much damage on that turret. It's probably going down. Even Frez in the top lane looking so much stronger compared to game number one. Did solid in game number two, but he relied a little bit on some additional uh, jungler, jung, jungler. <laughs> jungler. 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 Some jungler help. Now he's able to take this uh, 1v1 rather consistently here versus Gus. And I'm a jungler, and I'm hungry. Yeah. I am Junger. I am Junger. <laughs> I am Jungry. But we got uh we got the Mountain Drake spawning in roughly thirty five seconds. Fred I mean, shot on the shot on the taunt again though. I mean if there's anywhere where Carlton needs to just pop off out of nowhere, it would have to be a team fight. But even look at this, the seven to nine level difference. Oh it's my. going to be just trick just pushing He's just the run go him button. Down? Runs him down, takes him out, add another one to the kill board. Five and one for him. Six and two on Yule. Holy smokes. And he has, he, he even built Menjai's. That's just straight disrespect there coming from Yule. This is revenge for the Shivana game, I suppose, where the <laughs> Menjai's fireball would just take everybody out. You kill me with fireballs, I will kill you with, the, with Zoe. How does uh, Stars and Galaxy Dust sound? <laughs> Two <laughs> levels up here in this top lane, too. Holy smokes. This one's really looking good for St. Clair. Oh? Something would really have to go wrong here for them to drop this lead, I feel. I do not want to curse this, though. This is just Saints game to lose. Oh? And actually, Gus is looking to be aggressive here. The shield comes out for Frez oh right my. at the right moment. He's going to be able He's... to just taunt away. Does he get away? He does. Doesn't give away the kill for free. And while all this is happening, it's Drake time. Rez can potentially look for a kill here on Gus if he lands his taunt. He is going to go for it, actually. Jumps on him, takes him down. That's a dragon oh and a my. kill. Just so much damage. And you'll just, uh, just being ever so annoying on the Zoe and stealing away the... The enemy raptor camp. Did he get that red buff as well? He did not. I mean, you need fancy feet to dodge Zoe, but at the same time, does it really matter if you're dancing around, if Trick is just going to push a button and run you down and just crack you over the skull? <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> really matter. It's a nice... It's nice that there's so much gold in two champions and two players that have two different objectives. 
And there we go. Bot lane gonna start getting some action here. What is that? Hitbox. Oh, never story. Barely going to survive here. The shield coming out just in time. However, Iman is forced to use the stopwatch. Tower is gonna try and make things a little bit difficult here for Mizco. He somehow got that max range. Beautifully done there. Yes, stopwatch. Holy smokes. And Fred's coming in to clean it up. Just so well played from the side of Saints. Everywhere. And Trick is just gonna run the mountain down. Everywhere you look, there's Carlton Death. It's just a bloodbath everywhere. I mean, it was a brawly game to begin with, but now it has become so one-sided that it doesn't even feel like the same teams at this point. However, Trick oh, may have overextended ever so slightly, but that is going to be the teleport coming in here from Fres. He's going to try and hunt down Chenong, but uh, he's going to hop over the wall. Fres still chasing, though. He has, has no time. Yeah, already used a taunt to try and jump over there. Is he going to try and dive this? He seems to have the damage to do so. This might be a bit of an over-aggressive move. The shield's going to come in clutch, and that's actually going to be some Aww. shutdown gold going over to uh, Shenong, and that was just an unfortunate overextension there on the side of Frez. I think he would have gotten the kill if he just hit the tower instead, because I'm pretty sure Titanic damage still goes through on tower. Lost on my check, that is. Who knows? I might be wrong. Well, I mean, if there's any way that Carlton's coming back, it's going to be through plays like that. Where you get a little bloodthirsty, you chase for days, and then you end up either eating too much turrets or you find multiple members of Carlton. It is still possible. How many pro games have we seen, or games in general, the teams get a massive lead and just can't close out? Ooh. It happens way too often. Barely hitting that hook onto, uh, onto Gus. I think I'm gonna take the second Rift Herald though. Arrow lining up for it. Got to about half health now. Lazzy's here as well. Put some extra DPS on it and they should be able to secure it. Yeah. Oh my, never story. Just got his HP just eviscerated by the Zoe. Arrow coming down. That's gonna be right on target. Iman is going to be taken down nice and quick. I mean, Zoe's got the freest of uh, attacks after that arrow. Even and with the QSS, he, he still could not survive that. That's impressive. There was, just, there was just too much CC laid on top of the Ash Arrow. Gosh, the top tower going down. The second mid turret down to half already. Still pushing down that top side as well. Saints just have total control over the map right now. Not I mean, letting Carlton breathe whatsoever. Ooh. I mean, Shenong got to just, like, farm for days, but it doesn't really matter when they're diving your team. Iman almost getting taken down again. Shelly coming in for that turret hit, taking at least half of it down already. Frez with the bomb. It's just going to go in the background, but Lassie's a bit out of position here. Going to get caught out instantly. Shenong going to find the kill onto Cutter that. Edge. And then Neverstory also finding the kill onto Mansfell. And a little bit of signs of life coming out here from Carlton. Oh my. Yul still uh, still alive, just chunking away at Carlton with the paddle stars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, finally going to back like out. They're just going to go for a reset and uh, look to try and take uh, the third Drake, which is a, uh, a cloud Drake this game. So that'd be two clouds out on the field this time, I think. Or am I wrong? No, I'm wrong. No, first game was Ocean. Second game was Infernal. Yeah, we've had a we've had a different Drake every game this series. That's kind of cool. Hey, Trick gonna make this a little bit difficult for for them, like trying to either get Vision or trying to get their blue buff, making it so it's not safe in the slightest. Yeah, Schnog, you may have gotten a couple kills, but you still gotta get out of dodge when you're in front of an Olaf, especially one that's six and one. But Saints should not go for this dragon. The trick does not have smite on him right now as he used it on the scuttle crab. But I don't think uh, Carlton knows that he, he doesn't have a second charge on his smite. So they're just going to give it up. All right, so that definitely worked out there for St. Clair. But now we're just in a little bit of a null state where, where everyone is just going to farm for, I'd say... Probably a minute, minute and a half. 
Oh, Yule just pops the heal and goes aggressive with it. That little extra burst of movement speed. But uh, wasn't able to get the spells to land. And Yul has, has double pen items, so he's going to be doing quite a bit of damage to uh, anybody that he hits on the side of Carlton. And there's the arrow, makes contact, but of course, Everstory wisely keeping that cleanse ready for that arrow hit. Just brushes it off and falls back behind the tower. Hey, Yule jumping in once again. Did they make contact with anybody? Neverstory mm. nearly got popped. Holy smokes. Yeah, he won't he won't have fight for uh for the next fight that happens. And Lazzy is also going for the CDR build on the Ash as well, going for the Essence Reaver instead of the Blade of the Rune King. I mean with how much your other teammates are popping off, you might as well just be support Ash. As often as you yeah. can get your slows out, as often as you can get your arrows out. Just keep firing them. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. You you slow them down, con crowd control them, we'll tear through them. And, I mean, Ash still, even with this build, is doing a decent chunk of damage anyway, so it's not like you're completely giving up your damage to do so. Both top laners just backing in front of each other, like uh, like there's a mutual gentleman's agreement. I'd like to see Saints try and get a pick on uh, on Never Story when the Karma's not around him, because he has no cleanse, and the only cleanse that he has right now is um, is from uh, Emon's Mikhail's uh, Crucible. Yeah, it's kind of scary. I mean, as much as you trust your teammates, if you don't have to rely on them, they feel much better. And okay, St. Clair just going to opt to Baron here. Although, uh, Carlton knows. very risky from them. Massive chunk of damage. That ultimate's going to be forced right away before the real fight even gets started. Yule is just doing so much damage to so oh many members my. here. Never Story gets smoked by the Ash Arrow, and it's going to get absolutely popped right down to 5% oh HP. My. He's so low, but Patel getting caught out. Okay, yeah, Patel goes down. However, it is going to get traded out real quick with Patel as well as Shenong, and we're going to see Iman fall as well. Can they find one more? <laughs> Trick tries to find it, but not oh quite my. going to get it. And Gus was not a part of that in the slightest. Just left his team to go down, and just straight up farm to that bot lane. As the rest of St. Clair just tears through middle now and is going to secure this inhibitor probably quickly. I would hope they take care of this. There it goes. And now they can either reset or possibly a Baron push. Yeah, it looks like reset gonna, is the option. They're just gonna reset for uh, for to spend their gold because they there was no way they could finish a uh, tier one tower. Oh, but Counter Lazi Gage is getting caught out. Oh Actually, no! This gets completely flipped on its head. Never story gets completely popped by Yul once again. From uh, when it looked like Lazi was about to get caught out of position, it was just bait. Might just look on Baron after that. I mean, you might as well. I think the smite is nearly available here for Trick as well. You just have to deal with Shenong. But if you have this <laughs> Zoe, if you have Yule just constantly zoning them out anyway, I mean, you could take this Baron for free. Shenong looking on Yule. Uh-oh, there we go. Was point blank with him, was able to get the shotgun shots where he needed it. Arrow barely hits. Now, this may have been an overconfident move here on the side of St. Clair, but Lazi is Wait, now Shenong's in the fight. Wait, Shenong's caught out. What is he doing? Wow, Lazi again just... Barely, almost finding himself out of position, living on a thread, and everybody, including his team and himself, just turn it around and pick up a kill. Carlton is just, is just not playing to their win condition right now, which is the ornaments from uh, from Orn. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> or the other four or three or four ornaments, not pun intended as well. <laughs> yes, but okay. he's not level 13 yet, so he didn't even have his own upgrades as well. Yeah, so he's definitely hurting. Level 14 is when he can... Uh, this is his first upgrade for his teammates. But the only thing he can really upgrade on Carlton is uh, the Shenong's Black Cleaver. Carlton's don't have enough gold to, to buy the Ornn items or the items needed to upgrade. And you got a lot of... Uh, I mean, a lot of deaths, but a lot of gold from kills and assists here on the Shenong, of course. So he's going to dive in. But I'd be extremely nervous trying to uh, 
Give up a soul a point for, for the side of Saints Gaming. Oh, it is too. Three Drakes already on the board. If this gets cleaned up, it is going to be massive trouble on the side of Carlton. They just have no way to get into the into the river. Oh, they get it, and the arrow is right on target. Schnog oh is my. down instantly. They just collapse off of them. And while this fight is happening, minions are pushing the, oh the mid turrets as well. Emon. Barely going to get out of there with his life, but they have to completely so retreat here. Saints just need to quickly focus on a specific target. Don't split themselves too thin. I've seen that a few times here from them today. We're or in this game alone, where they um, they get such a good lead and they kind of go around, yeah. And Baron is going to be the call, and I mean, of course, Shen can uh, show up whenever he pleases for the most part with that ultimate, so makes sense. He can take care of that bot lane as the rest of the squad are going to try and secure this Baron halfway down. Once again, Yule's going to be on zoning duty. As he always is. But if Carlton can stall out for another five yeah five minutes it's, they ha they still have a chance with the other dragon coming up but i don't think saints will let them do that i mean if they spread themselves too thin it could definitely happen however looks like everybody's gonna back up spend, spend some gold. of that gold yeah i'm sure they're sitting on a little bit at this point regroup let shen do his thing and then everybody else just stay together and Death Stance completed for uh, for Trick here. He's going to be a very hard person to kill. And the flank attempt here in the top lane. This is the bait. Once again, Lazzy's doing it again. He's probably going to go down here. Never mind. That is going to be Frez with the oh ult. My. But he does get bursted down. Oh, the collateral damage. It was just enough damage to kill Lazzy there before the Shen could TP in. I mean, it's not a bait if they actually take you out, so... That pick just gave them some breathing room to uh, to stall out for Elder Dragon. Yeah, definitely did. Don't have to worry about any sort of long-range engage. No consistent damage. Your turrets are probably going to be okay. They still going to be careful of, uh, of Yield on, on his Zoe. <laughs> yeah, they could see... Has... I don't know. Oh, he they're going to jump on Fres. Frez in an absolute world of hurt, just getting completely CC locked. Gonna try and get back over here, but that is uh -oh. the most unfortunate bomb in the world. Uh -oh. There he goes. Gets popped. Taken down. However, Yule getting a little bit antsy too. Gonna be going down after a massive overextend trying to save Frez. Meanwhile, in the top lane though, Trick and Mianska okay. grabbing the, the inhib turret. They should be able to get out with their lives though and, and save that Baron buff. I mean, they at least trade a little bit for it, but dang, was that ever cocky coming out of the side of St. Clair. That could have been much worse. Oh, definitely. Still, the Baron buff should be should be done soon, so just using the last bit of that Baron buff to recall. And I mean, look at Yule's stacks. He gets down to one Magi stack. Yeah, that overextension basically, of course, resetting those stacks and putting some shutdown gold onto whoever got the elimination there. I think it was either Senna or Graves. But at, but at this point in the game, I'm pretty sure you would want the Senna to have right. as much gold as possible. I was going to say, for the sake of Carlton, I would hope they got it on the Senna because, yes, sure, uh, chenong has been all over the place, either on the uh, kill or the death side of the board. But with all those kills and assists, he's at least gotten himself some decent gold. Senna was relatively behind, it felt like. But able to get it back at least a little bit would be nice. He, he's been up. He was up two kills the entire laning phase for uh, Never Story. Mm -hmm. They just never got a chance to use that uh, that kill lead that they had to do anything. Now this is getting Big Carlton some breathing room. The first turret, or first mid turret, rather, going down. Oh, man, so it looks like he's caught out. And yeah, they were thinking about going in, but they opted against it after a little bit. Staying as a group. Uh, looking for potential poke damage here. Looks like the first upgrade is going to, yep, the, the Obsidian Cleaver on Graves. 
And then how often do you get to make something for your teammates? Is it every level? Every level, yes. Okay, so starting it off with the graves. And then we'll probably so... see it on Senna next, or does she have an item that can be upgraded? Um, she has. She would have to build Infinity Edge to get the, um, I don't know what the upgrade is called for Ornn. But it gives her more, um, I think more critical damage, I think. It's either going to be the Infinity Edge that's going to get upgraded, or um, the Death Cap, if uh, Patel or Pitalp ever gets to build it. And Pitalp is probably the closest to getting Meanwhile, that. Meanwhile, Frez, okay. I'm just in the top lane on, on the inhib right now. Shinon going in for the duel with Trick, but he also has Lazzy right there alongside him. It's going to allow him to take him, take down the Graves nice and quick. Mansfow looking to get aggressive. Yule's right along the outside, completely sniping off Iman. That's going to be the Zillion alt down as well. Zillion himself is down, and this is looking like a slaughter here for St. Clair. Meanwhile, Frez is just going to end the game by okay. himself. Didn't, game. Have to, didn't have to pop his ulti. Just kept on pushing, already halfway through that turret. The rest of the cavalry has arrived. Nobody went down. St. Clair, after an extremely rough game one, gonna turn this around. And Shinong's already out of here. That's gonna be yeah, it. That's game. St. Clair starting off the season strong with a 2-1 victory over Carleton University. GG to Saints Gaming. Coming back from Ooh. 01. Fantastic stuff coming out there from the Saints. And of course, special, <coughs> excuse me, especially in that game there one, fantastic job to Carlton. Especially, well, personally, I've never seen the AP Shivana stuff. I don't know how common that is, but that made me happy no, for, the, it's, for it's, the day. It's not common anymore. It's a, it's a, it's a niche kind of pick, like one trick kind of. Well, it worked in game one, but banned away in game two, and then it just seemed like everybody got warmed up and just started firing on all cylinders. All lanes <laughs> started winning. In game two, that fantastic level one team fight for St. Clair that got them so ahead and got the Jin a double before level one or before level two. Yeah. Like, beautiful. First and then this game three was just guaranteed. solid. BF sword, just guaranteed oh. already. Sympathy pains. But yeah, good, good game to uh, to Carleton University. Yes, good games. It was fantastic having the chance to play you guys. I'm sure we'll get to play in regular season action as well. Of course, this was preseason action for the OPSC, which, of course, I, as I mentioned earlier, an inaugural season for them. So all of Ontario looking to compete here. And we take the win today. But we'll see what happens when uh, the regular season actually puts the games on the line here. I do want to thank you again, Tommy, for hopping in on commentary here with me. It would have definitely been extremely lonely, and I'm thankful to have had your knowledge and your commentary here with me today. Hopefully we Happy can have help. you on again sometime soon. All right. Well, uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning into uh, the series. I hope to see you next time. Absolutely. And then just to close out here tonight, of course, 2-1 victory to St. Clair. And you can expect our next match to be next week as we do have the UCEA Overwatch preseason. They have, I think, one or two preseason games. Actually, it's right there for me. Yeah, one preseason game, and then on the 23rd, they start their regular season. So the Saints gaming season, as you can see, we're just about to get started. This was just the tip of the iceberg in terms of content and matches that you will have here on the Saints Gaming CA channels, whether this is the U YouTube channel, Twitch, or Twitter. Be sure to follow or slash sub to e each of them so you know when we're going live. And we're looking to put out a bunch more additional content other than just matches, as long as I don't get overwhelmed with my school schedule. But we'll see what we can do. Some player interviews and such, so you can actually get to know some of your Saints players that you're rooting for. If you're not already friends or family with them, and some additional content as well. But I'm going to sign off for the night. Thank you all for tuning in, and we will see you next week for Overwatch. My name is Daniel Banner. Have a great night, everybody.